All right, guys, check it out. It is mid-April. We are right in the heart of galaxy season, and I have finally got a clear night. Look at that blue sky behind me. It is gorgeous out today. About 70 degrees right now. It's about 530. I've got about two hours before the sun goes down, but I wanted to get the telescope all set up, get everything ready to go, because tonight I have, I want to add to, I've got about two hours of data on M106 and I want to add some tonight. I'm going to have clear skies throughout the night. M106 is going to rise, or, or, uh, rise right over here in the north. What's going to be great is I'm going to have a clear shot of it pretty much all night. So I'm not sure how many hours I'm going to collect on it. There's a couple other objects I'm thinking about uh, putting a little time on tonight. But I finally got a clear night and I'm hoping to really get some data tonight and have a great image. I want to ask you to do something in a moment. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about M106 and why I'm so excited about it and a little about the details. But I want to encourage you, if you enjoy this site, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. And um, I look forward to, to, to having a great picture to share with you by the end of this. Thanks for tuning in today. Before we get started imaging tonight, I want to take a couple of moments and talk to you about the galaxy that we're going to be shooting tonight. M106 is located about halfway between Ursa Major, the Big Dipper, and Canis Venetaci. You'll see here on Stellarium, I've got it called up, and I'm zooming in to kind of show you what it's going to look like in my telescope and imaging setup. This red box that goes around is actually a cool feature of Stellarium. It allows you to put in your sensor size and your telescope uh, information so that you can get an idea of how you're going to frame up certain objects. And so tonight, here's the object that we're going to try to uh, focus on. You'll notice there's a couple other small galaxies around it, NGC 4248, which is a small satellite galaxy of M106. It's kind of like the smaller gal galaxies that we see surrounding Andromeda. And you'll also see a couple of other small galaxies up here and down here. But we're going to focus on M106. Now M106 is, is categorized as an intermediate uh, spiral galaxy. Intermediate means it's somewhere between a barred and an unbarred galaxy. Let me show you an example of what I mean here. A barred galaxy, this is a good example taken by the European Southern Observatory of NG1365. And you'll notice how the central portion of this um, galaxy forms a bar shape, this sort of straight bar. An um, a, a example of an unbarred galaxy would be here. This is the Whirlpool galaxy. This is an image that I took, and you'll notice it's, it's what we normally think of in the sense of a spiral galaxy with no bar. So this galaxy is somewhere in between that. It, if you'll see here, it has the beginnings of what looks like it could be a bar, but it's not fully developed yet. And so that's why it's called an intermediate uh, bar, uh, intermediate galaxy. It's similar in size to the Andromeda galaxy, but because it's so much farther away, it appears much smaller in our telescopes. If you think about it, Andromeda is about 2.5 million light years away, whereas M106 is somewhere between 22 and 25 million light years away. So even though they're approximately about the same diameter, M106 is going to appear much smaller. What's also very cool about this particular galaxy is at its center is a massive black hole. Now there is a massive black hole at the center of most galaxies, but what makes this as interesting is 
that the black hole at the center of M106 is about 40 million times more massive than our sun. In fact, when this was first detected back in, I believe it was around 1995, this was the densest region of matter ever discovered up to that point in the galaxy. And so this has brought a lot of attention to M106. It's been studied by the Chandra X-ray Telescope and numerous other observations. And what makes us a little bit different than our own galaxy is that while we have a supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way, it's inactive. This black hole is actively feeding on matter at the center of this galaxy. And some people think that's what gives it, we'll see on the images later on, the warped shape that you'll observe. And so this is a very fascinating object to image and to study. So let's get over and start taking some pictures. All right, guys, it's uh, evening now, and I am shooting my first image of the night, uh, kind of a test image. I've got everything lined up. I used astrophotography tool uh, to uh, plate solve and use the uh, point uh, craft tool to get M106 lined up. And um, you can see here, this is sort of the circle that shows um, the uh, size of the object. I've got my camera cooled down to minus 10 degrees, and I'm shooting a, a 180 second uh, image here just to test it. We can go over here and take a look at my guiding real quick. And the guiding's not too bad tonight. Um, I actually was having some problems over the last a couple imaging sessions with my guiding, and I've made some adjustments to it. But um, it looks pretty good right now. Um, and I, I'm pretty happy with that. I hope it'll hold up throughout the rest of the night. And um, so let's flip back over here to uh, PhD, or I'm um, sorry, APT, and let's see what the first image is going to look like. Exposure finished. Here we go. Ooh, and the first image is going to look pretty good. Now, this might not look like what you think it should look like if you're not into astrophotography, but actually this is a pretty good image. And once we stack um, a whole bunch of these on top of each other, this will come out with a, a lot of detail, and that's going to come out really well. You can see sort of the companion galaxy here. I think this is a companion galaxy here. And there's one that I don't have framed up, but over here. But this is a pretty good, uh, pretty good image. You can sort of see the uh, the arms of the galaxy swirling around here. So we're going to get started. I'm going to flip over here and get my plan brought up. I have put a plan together that I call my 180 second plan. You'll notice that in total I'm going to shoot a total of 80 images. Don't be confused by this. I'm not using any additional filters or anything. Um, when I set it up, I don't know why I did it, but I set it up in two sections like this. So we're going to click on start and uh, click on M106 is the object name. Exposure started. And there it goes. Now it's going to sit there and um, we, will, uh, we will take a whole bunch of images and stack them and uh, I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, I'm about um, almost halfway through this imaging session. I've got uh, just finished um, I'm, I'm shooting the 39th uh, image here right now, and I thought I'd just give you a quick look at it. In just a moment, when I get to 40, uh, once I finish the 40th uh, image, I'm going to take time and, and check my focus again. Uh, it just did the Meridian flip maybe a half an hour or so ago, and uh, everything's looking pretty good. This is the latest image here, and again, if I go all the way back to the first image and compare the... Let's see, the first image uh, and the last image that I took, everything's looking pretty good. You can see it moved a little bit there. I'm dithering um, every frame, and so uh, pretty happy with it. We'll see how it comes out. Um, I'll talk to you in a little bit.